here this morning to look at uh, uh, two uh, applications, uh, uh, IC3D for 3D uh, uh, visualization of packaging, and then we will have a look at uh, uh, the automated proofreading solution of uh, Global Vision as well. Um, as I said, what I'll do is I'll start with uh, yeah, IC3D. Um, if you have any questions along the way, uh, uh, feel free to, uh, uh, to, to, to ask. What I understood from AREC is that uh, uh, we will be focusing on uh, labels and on sleeves. Um, this is one of the possible, uh, these are certainly possibilities and capabilities within IC3D. However, you will see that uh, uh, IC3D has many more capabilities uh, and is actually uh, uh, a tool for all-in-one uh, uh, 3D visualization of, uh, uh, of packaging. Um, I will not be able to go through all of uh, the functionality. Um, if you have any specific questions at some point, just let me know. Um, what I'll do is I'll start with taking you a little bit through uh, uh, the interface. Um, so first of all, we have here a, a model library. This model library contains a number of models uh, uh, that you can simply uh, uh, drag onto your scene uh, uh, and uh, uh, start manipulating or start working with. Um, however, I believe more importantly is actually uh, um, the uh, template library. In the template library, you have a number of tools here uh, that will enable you to create uh, your own models. These models, you will be able to save them in the model library later on. So you've seen that I just dragged uh, from the model library a bottle uh, uh, onto uh, the scene. However, if I want to create my own bottle with my own specific uh, uh, dimensions, I can do that uh, uh, here, for instance, in this uh, uh, 2D spinner tool um, and uh, fully independently create uh, uh, the bottle that uh, uh, I want to uh, make and add that uh, uh, to my uh, to my scene. Um, mm -hmm. I have a number of uh, other tools here as well, so I can uh, create cartons, um, I can uh, uh, create pillow uh, bags and all sorts of other bags. Um, I have a shape modeler that allow me to create uh, uh, very specific shapes, and I will get into the details of that uh, uh, just later on. I can also create tubes uh, yeah, shrink sleeves uh, and things like that. If I um, uh, cannot create uh, uh, somehow any of the models uh, yeah, in uh, IC3D, which would be very surprising, um, you can always import uh, your models as well. Uh, so you can import models from any uh, your popular uh, your 3D file format. Um, so you can uh, uh, import uh, uh, Colada files, Modo files, 3D Studio Max files, uh, uh, away from the whole list as you see it uh, uh, here. Now, let's uh, start with uh, a very practical example, um, with a label example, actually. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take uh, this wine bottle, and one of the libraries I did not show you is the material library, so from my material library, I have a whole list of materials. However, if I want to create my own material, I can add my own material here and start creating that uh, my, uh, myself as well. Here I am just, in this case, going to take a, a clear glass uh, material and I will change also uh, the, the string around uh, my, uh, my cork. Um, and I'm going to add a, uh, a label here. Now, uh, add, adding the label means that I can give it the name, uh, prompt okay. label in this case, um, and I can define its dimensions. Um, I can also define whether it's a double-sided label and what size it is going to overlap. If it is an overlapping label, however, in this case, it will not be overlapping. Um, and I am just adding my label uh, yeah, here to uh, my bottle. As you see, I can drag this label and it will follow the shape of uh, yeah, my bottle. Um, 
this is when I want to have a free um, uh, positioning of the label. However, if I want to have a more accurate positioning of the label, here I have also all the capabilities to do that. If I have a bended label because uh, yeah, it goes over a conical shape, that is also uh, yeah, one of the possibilities. Now, if I want to now put artwork on here, which is typically what uh, uh, we want to do, um, I simply select my label and I he have here an Adobe Illustrator uh, icon, uh, which I can click and uh, yeah, a link with uh, uh, Adobe Illustrator will be automatically created and the IC3D will create uh, uh, the label at the right uh, uh, size, meaning the size that I defined in uh, uh, IC3D. Um, so I now have a label that is 100 by 100 uh, uh, millimeters, as you can see. What you can also see is that I have here on my layers, I have an artwork layer and a cutout layer. Uh, uh, so uh, we will talk about that in a little bit more detail later on. And I have here a, a, a small plugin that allows me to update uh, uh, my, uh, my artwork. Um, so what I will uh, actually do is, uh, if I'm in, the, in a design phase, I can very uh, simply uh, say, uh, fine, French wine. Uh, and as you see, I'm not a very good designer. Um, but just to give you the idea, um, I will get very quick feedback here and I will get my design on that label. Um, so if I'm in a design phase, uh, yeah, I can use this uh, yeah, to, um, uh, to see what I'm doing uh, yeah, in a 2D environment uh, yeah, in, uh, in immediately in 3D. Now, in this case, what I will do is I will actually take a, a, a label that was already created um, and I will simply place that and update it. And when I go back to IC3D, I see that this label uh, has been uh, nicely, uh, nicely placed on that, not on there. Now, I actually go back to uh, uh, my, uh, my layers here, so I have the artwork layer and the cutout layer. Uh, in the cutout layer, what I can actually do is I, is I can put the cut path, path on there. So if that cut path uh, was on um, my, oh, let me drag that over to the cut path. Uh, if that cut path um, was in my file, I could uh, yeah, easily separate that uh, yeah, from the file and uh, put that on there. Here, um, I'm creating the cutout layer uh, uh, on the fly, and I will have a look at what that looks like in IC3D. And so you see that I get these rounded edges um, that are on there. These are just rounded corners in this case, but it actually can be any kind of shape, any cutout shape that you can define I, uh, can be used uh, uh, on there. Um, so uh, that's that for my label. Uh, what you will also see is that I have in Illustrator here, I have uh, two spot colors. I have a gold and a gold emboss. Um, I will be able to identify these two spot colors in uh, uh, IC3D. These are, in this specific case, two foils uh, that I have defined. And so I can go select my uh, label, go to my layers, um, and I am able here to select now uh, the uh, gold as gold emboss. Um, and the gold emboss as well. I will add. There we go. And so you see that uh, uh, the spot color uh, now gets all the characteristics of that uh, uh, specific material that uh, I have defined, right? Um, I have a gold emboss here as well, so I've uh, applied the foil uh, on there. If now I want to apply uh, an actual embossing, I can do that as well. And you see that it is getting uh, that, uh, uh, that embossing effect uh, uh, right there. 
last thing, well, not last thing, there's a number of different things that I can still do. Um, I can go to my special effects and I can give, for instance, this bottle a, uh, a filling and I can define the color of the fill that that is going to have. And this is just one way of uh, uh, creating a filling. I can actually also create uh, uh, another filling, and I'll, I'll talk about that in just uh, uh, a little bit more detail uh, uh, later on. So I have here now uh, uh, this uh, bottle with the filling. I can go back to my lighting environments, and uh, you see that there are all kinds of reflections here on this bottle. They come from this uh, environment here. So what I can do is I can actually change that environment to, for instance, uh, a specific studio uh, environment uh, that, I, uh, that I choose. But I can also change this to uh, an HDR uh, image. So in this case, if I want to take it to the wine store, I, uh, I can take this to the wine store, and I can actually also use this uh, uh, image as uh, a background um, to put my uh, bottle in. So now I am actually putting my bottle on that shelf. There we go. And I will put it uh, right here to see what it looks like. Uh, uh, together with uh, other bottles. Um, there are many ways to put uh, something in an environment. This is just one way to do that, a very quick way to do that. Um, let me actually go back to uh, um, the default visualization um, and zoom in again. I can also change it for back shot reasons. If I want a, a, a more neutral background, I can just change the background to be white. Um, and I can very easily create either a floor reflection. So here I get a floor reflection. Um, or I can uh, use shadows. And these shadows, I can uh, yeah, save the shadows uh, yeah, as shadow maps. I can then also edit them. So I can basically uh, yeah, get the effect that I want. So if I want to make that shadow darker, and if I want to change the position uh, of it, I can uh, yeah, very easily do that. Um, I can do exactly the same with the other uh, yeah, light, where I can uh, change the position of it. Uh, yeah, change the opacity uh, yeah, if I want to. And once again, save this so I can use this uh, yeah, for, uh, yeah, for later. Um, when it comes to exporting this, if I'm happy with this image, I can go ahead and export it. And I can export it to uh, many different things. I can export it to uh, an image. Um, and so in this case, I will export it to uh, uh, an image that is uh, uh, 500 by uh, uh, 290 uh, pixels and 300 uh, uh, DPI. And so I will call that wine. And I can save that as a, a PNG file, a TIFF file, or a Targa file. And so if I go to my desktop, I will find that uh, uh, image right here. Yeah. Uh, I can also export uh, uh, this to many other 3D formats. Uh, yeah. So I can uh, export it just as a PDF. Uh, I can export it as a 3D PDF. However, what I really want to show you is the export to uh, your Opsys. So included in uh, uh, the license of IC3D is an access to a platform uh, uh, developed by IC3D called IC3D Opsys. Uh, uh, this will actually uh, enable you to um, export it to an online platform to make it easy to share this uh, uh, with your uh, customer. Yeah? 
And so we are uh, initially creating the content, uh, uh, and then we will be uh, exporting that uh, to uh, IC3D Opsys. IC3D Opsys is a little bit like uh, um, um, like Dropbox, uh, yeah, so it, it, it is uh, an online platform on which you can share a file, you get a unique uh, URL that uh, links to that, that file, and that unique URL you can share with your customer. So they don't need a password, they don't need any login uh, to get access to their model, uh, they simply need that uh, unique URL uh, that uh, uh, that you will create once you are exporting uh, uh, to uh, uh, to boxes. Um, and while that is happening, let me actually take you through some examples. zoom in uh, yeah, on this model. So this is IC3D Opsys, uh, yeah, a very easy way uh, yeah, to, uh, to share uh, yeah, content with, uh, yeah, uh, with your customer. And we'll just give this another minute uh, yeah, to finish. My internet connection does not seem to be the fastest uh, yeah, today. get the link in just uh, yeah, a second. So this is this unique link. Uh, I can hit the view button um, and now it will uh, load that, uh, that image that I just uploaded and I can look at that. Uh, yeah, if I want to, I can share this with my customer um, and uh, it opens uh, yeah, the email automatically uh, yeah, with the link uh, in there. Yeah. Um, I talked about uh, yeah, the ability to, uh, the different uh, yeah, capabilities of actually adding uh, yeah, liquid. What you see here is uh, yeah, quite a rapid way of, of uh, adding liquid. Uh, yeah, one of the things that you can do is also have a photorealistic view of this, uh, um, of the content. So in that case, um, I can uh, add the um, liquid in here, and so let me have a quick look at uh, the liquid. So this is going to be whiskey in this case, but I'll be able to edit that uh, uh, later on. So I've added this, uh, um, this liquid uh, here now. And that liquid is actually going to help me create a photorealistic uh, view of uh, this bottle. So uh, let me add the ray trace uh, window here. Um, and it is somewhat bigger. There we go. And 
so what we have now is a much more uh, realistic view. Of course, I would still have to edit uh, uh, the content, but what I'm able to uh, the content so that it becomes wine instead of this uh, uh, more whiskey-like uh, uh, view. But I have a built-in ray tracer that is actually going to uh, uh, be able to be used also during export, uh, which is going to give me a much more uh, uh, photorealistic view of uh, uh, what this bottle uh, uh, looks like. Uh, so photorealism uh, uh, through this built-in ray tracer is uh, uh, certainly one of uh, uh, the capabilities. Um, I will put this aside. I, uh, and I will actually create I, um, a, a new file. What we'll do is we'll actually have a look now at uh, importing the model. So, as I said, I can import um, Polada files. In this case, a uh, gray box. So, with that spray bottle, what I can do is, and what I typically want to do is uh, put a shrink film uh, around it. So I will go to my template library and I will put a shrink film uh, around this. And I see here where the overlap happens, uh, yeah, that is at the back. If I want to position that differently, I can do that uh, yeah, as well. Um, and I will now uh, start my simulation. And you see that it is nicely wrapping the shrink uh, around the bottle. And you can see how it is progressing now in this case uh, yeah, I can uh, let uh, yeah, this progress until it is entirely done um, I will not uh, yeah, do that uh, yeah, I will just move on uh, yeah, in this case and stop the simulation I, um, when I stop the simulation I will be able to add this model to the scene And very similarly as I've done before, I can simply make the link to the illustrator. I get the flats of uh, the documents that I have created. And I can now place uh, the document that I distortion that is happening here so what I can actually also do is um, I go I can go in here and uh, yeah, let me first include that uh, uh, and can do is I can uh, pre-distort uh, uh, this 
uh, objects, and I don't have the right objects, uh, all of the right objects uh, selected. Um, but basically, um, if I have the right objects uh, selected, I can actually distort uh, this object. So uh, let me have a look here. Uh, I want to have 10 rooms and I want to have 12 points. Um, and I will be able to apply the uh, uh, distortion. Yeah. Um, when I update that uh, there, I will see that it gets updated here as well, and so that my distortion is correct. Now I've done this only for this specific object. I can do that for all the objects uh, uh, on uh, uh, the side here. So this way, I get a very nice uh, uh, shrink uh, uh, bottle uh, uh, with uh, uh, corrected artwork uh, uh, on there. Um, that is uh, uh, another example. When it comes to uh, shelf visualization, I, I talked about this uh, uh, as well. You have different ways of uh, adding shelves. Uh, so I have here a shelf visualizer uh, for one shelf. Uh, or for uh, uh, a complete uh, uh, gondola, or a refrigerated unit, uh, um, or a glass door uh, uh, unit. What I can actually do in this case is I can uh, add products to this uh, uh, shell very simply by um, adding them uh, uh, to my shelf. So in this case, I can very easily add product to my shelf and combine that uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with other products. This is one way of doing that. Uh, um, well, this is actually the second way of, uh, of doing that. I've shown you the other way uh, uh, already. Yeah. Uh, there is one more way uh, of doing that that I will quickly show you, is I can actually go take a picture in any supermarket um, and I can define that as a, a background. And then I will be able to import um, that, the file into that. Um, and let me quickly have a, a look here. model that I have created to take to this uh, uh, to get a very realistic view of uh, actually what my new packaging is going to look like. You see that I, um, my model has been adjusted uh, to the perspective that I have in my picture, so I'm able to entirely right, fit that uh, in there, right? Uh, and then the next thing that I can actually do is I can go in here uh, and even create a mimic the actual uh, shadows as well by simply adding a fake shelf and activating my uh, my shadows right there. So I am able to edit that until I get the desired uh, effect. There I go. And I have exactly the effect that, uh, that I want. So this is another way of putting uh, something uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the shelf. As I said, this is a very uh, short demo. I can also do folding carton uh, um, uh, simply by importing uh, a dot line. So uh, in this case, um, I could import the XF file, for instance, um, and uh, define uh, the cut uh, lines and the uh, fold lines. Uh, 
split my lines and then generate my model. I can define the material uh, here, so I have different materials in here uh, yeah, as well. If I want a very thick flute, I can use that thick flute. And then all I have to do is define my actual folding angles. In this case, they're going to be all 90 degrees. Uh, and I need to define my front face. And I can add that model to the scene. And I have complete box, and very similarly as I've done before, uh, I, uh, I can go to Illustrator. However, I don't have to go to Illustrator. There is also a built in PDF editor, and so if I have ready made artwork, I can simply uh, select the artwork I, um, from within the application, place that uh, on my. Uh, on my box in this case, I, uh, and uh, update that, and also get a nice box uh, going. Once again, a very quick overview of uh, ICT. Uh, are there any specific questions? Wait a moment, please, but because I'm uh, uh, talking with uh, with Mr. Wojtkowski on the phone, okay? Okay. Przez telefon tylko pana słychać, tak. Czyli dokładnie to, co było tam wcześniej pokazane z tą butelką, jak rozumiem? Dokładnie, dokładnie. Mhm. Pokazujemy sobie, gdzie opakowanie taki jest rozłożony się, jak jest, jak, jak powiedzmy, czyli kartonowe. Tak. Czyli to, to po prostu było dodatkowe. Ale z tym, że są nie, że nie są to były obrotowe, więc nie mogę to przejść. ten produkt, e, pokazać jak on będzie się zachowywał i wyedytować e, w ilustratorze grafikę, która ma e, się pojawić na tym naszym opakowaniu. I w tym momencie, jak gdyby, czyli wejściem, jak gdyby jest już ten, e, ten, ten kształt wykrojnika. W jakim, w jakim stopniu można go edytować, za to w, przede wszystkim się zaczytuje i definiuje, co jest, e, co jest którym elementem, jak gdyby tam składany w przypadku pudełek kartonowych. 
A jeśli chodzi o te, te, ta edycja u Państwa tego kształtu wynika z czego? Bo to, 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 to dotyczy właśnie etykiet? Dotyczy sniwów, to Opuszczonych na, na, na opakowaniu. Ale z tego co widziałem, to nie jest taki edytor taki, że w tym edytorze po prostu gdzieś pytamy i, 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 i dokonamy jakiejś deformacji elementów, tylko, tylko musimy ich dokonać w ilustratorze, tak? De facto kształt tej deformacji jest przekładany, przenoszony do ilustratora. W ilustratorze pojawia się w związku z tym ta cała deformacja i ta i jak gdyby korektę dokonuje się na ilustratorze, a IC3D po prostu bierze i przelicza to z tego dokumentu e, z tego ilustratorowego. Robi wizualizację do tych, dokładnie z uwzględnieniem tych wszystkich e, deformacji, które gdzieś tam po drodze następują. Czyli po prostu praca samego grafika jest na prostokącie, tak? Na to nakładana jest maska, która jest używana przez IC3D do tego, żeby zwizualizować ten produkt. I w związku z tym, jeżeli się okazuje, że w jakimś tam okresie tak, tego wygrzewania jak gdyby tego sliwa i tego jego obkurczania, następuje taka, taka, takie zniekształcenie, to w bardzo prosty sposób w samym ilustratorze jesteśmy w stanie to skorygować, co sam program nam bezbłędnie pokaże. Jak to zrobić? Czyli to jest taka interakcja pomiędzy tymi dwoma programami. A ilustrator jako narzędzie po prostu do, do pracy grafika płaskiego, w związku z tym nie, nie, nie wymagające specjalnie dużo umiejętności, no przeciętny grafik jest odznajmiony z tym całym ilustratorem, w związku z tym twórca tego oprogramowania po prostu uznał, że, że to jest właściwe narzędzie do tego, żeby łatwo pracować, a IC3D przeliczając te wszystkie modele po prostu pokazuje, co się z nimi będzie de facto działo. Też nie do końca, to znaczy jeżeli wchodzi nam ten prostokąt, tak jak to zrobi, zostało zrobione e, na tym, e, z tą butelką, następuje następnie proces obkurczania i teraz w zależności od tego, jak daleko idziemy z tym procesem obkurczania, takie deformacje są przenoszone z powrotem do ilustratora. Dokładnie, dokładnie tak. I w związku z tym, tak. I w związku z tym, w tym, że ilustratorze mamy tą warstwę tego prostokąta, na kto, od którego wyszliśmy, na niego nałożona jest warstwa de deformująca I, i ta warstwa deformująca jest dokładnie wynikiem tego, jak długo będziemy obkurczali ten cały produkt. Tam Tom w czasie prezentacji pokazywał, że tam jeszcze było takie miejsce, które nie do końca było obkurczone i po prostu trzeba byłoby dłużej jak gdyby obkurczać. Tak i jak gdyby ten cały, ten cały proces jak gdyby jest przenoszony w postaci tych zniekształceń do, do samego ilustratora. Przepraszam, do, do, tak, do ilustratora. I, no i w drugą stronę automatycznie, jeżeli w tym momencie, nie wiem, uznamy, bo, bo może być tak, że do tego, żeby uzyskać jakiś element, żeby był prostokątem, albo żeby tekst był czytelny i tak dalej, to inny element może nam się delikatnie rozjechać. Tak, i w tym momencie to. to to rozjechanie jest nanoszone i widzimy je w ilustratorze i jesteśmy w stanie je skorygować. Czyli możemy zupełnie inaczej, on tam pokazywał na tej prezentacji, że wziął jeden obiekt, nałożył na niego mesza, siateczkę i delikatnie go wykrzywił w przeciwnym kierunku, co spowodowało, że na naszym podglądzie IC3D on się zniekształcił, a przy czym on się zniekształcił jak gdyby w niewłaściwym kierunku. Ale normalnie służy to do tego, żeby doprowadzić z powrotem ten obiekt, który podczas tego obkurczania całego odjechał nam od tych wytycznych naszych, tak, czyli tego, że coś jest prostopadłe do czegoś innego, to w tym momencie po prostu następuje korekta tego elementu. Tego jednego, bo cała reszta na przykład przetwarzana jest w No i tak na tym polega ta, ta współpraca jednego z drugim. Mhm. Tak, oczywiście. Tak, tak, tak. Ja poproszę Tama, żeby pokazał, jak, jak wygląda taki modeler bardzo skomplikowany jakiejś, nie wiem, butelki chociażby, tak? Tam on za, zaczął od takiej, takiego stosunkowo prostego kształtu, ale tutaj można zrobić, do, nie wiem, chociażby butelkę skomplikowanego whisky, pamiętam kiedyś widziałem, także już, już proszę. Tam? 
may I ask you, because we are talking yeah. about the shape modeler, uh, could you present the, the, the Mr. Wojcicki, how, how does it work uh, when you, uh, with the different <laughs> models? Because you have used one bottle which came from Coleda, and uh, I would like you yeah. to, to show what is possible here inside the software to, to make the, the proper shape of the, uh, for example, bottle. Or yeah. So when it comes to modeling, uh, there's, there's a lot of capabilities uh, with uh, the shape modeler. Uh, so you can create basically virtually any shape uh, in, uh, in the shape modeler. Uh, yeah, let me start with uh, one example of uh, a bent bottle, uh, yeah, for instance. So that would be a perfume bottle or, uh, um, or an alcohol bottle, once again, um, where I am able to use these shapes. These shapes are actually shapes that are made in Illustrator. Uh, yeah, I just drag them uh, yeah, on uh, yeah, my model here uh, to create the, the, uh, the model that I want. Yeah. Um, so, in that case, I will uh, create in such a way the type of uh, bottle that I want, yeah? And you see uh, just one example, uh, uh, just one example here. Um, put that that way. There we go. Yeah. Um, so this is this is one example. Uh, I can create an, another example where I can create, for instance, a butter tray, um, where I'm using these shapes uh, here uh, to create this uh, butter tray. Oh, oh, that's the one. And so I'm, I simply drag these. Uh, uh, trays uh, uh, on uh, these uh, shapes uh, yeah, on there, and you see that that is the shape that they're getting. And so, in this case, uh, to actually get content, what I do is I drag this in, um, and I get uh, this kind uh, of a shape. Um, now, another example is creating a cog, for instance. Uh, so, if I want to create a cog. Uh, I think, there we go, there we go, I can simply do it this way, yeah, and so, in this case, I will round this up. That's So I will round uh, this this round as well, and I'll drag this uh, in, um, and I'm able to create a, a cog like that. Um, let me load an example of uh, uh, what uh, has been done before. So we're talking about the spray bottle, for instance. Um, so uh, one of the examples that we've done for a customer uh, is, uh, is this one. Uh, There we go. Yeah, so this might look a little bit like a, a more complex uh, model, but this is one that we've uh, created uh, just like that. Uh, um, so uh, this shows you what some of the capabilities uh, are. And basically what you do is you add this model uh, to your scene uh, and you can start working uh, with this uh, as you did with the, uh, the other model. I, um, I have uh, yeah, other examples uh, yeah, as well. Uh, let me open uh, uh, another one uh, that will show you the example. Uh, let me 
here we go. Uh, So this has actually used a combination of different uh, uh, techniques. Uh, uh, the base bottle was uh, uh, created uh, um, with, uh, uh, with the shape modeler. Uh, uh, so actually, let me see if I can show that to you, if I still have all the elements uh, uh, to actually show that. So the base model uh, uh, was created uh, uh, with uh, uh, the shape modeler, as you can see. Uh, uh, here, um, and I'll probably have to smoothen that uh, a little bit, or I'll just make this uh, a bit of an example. Uh, there we go. Oh, no. Yeah, and so I'll add this uh, uh, to uh, the scene. And so you've seen that there was another part that was uh, jumping out of this bottle uh, here. So what we can actually do is uh, we can also uh, create uh, embossing uh, on this. Uh, so I'll have to cheat a little bit and have a little bit of a look at what the size of this uh, bottle is. Uh, look at the transform. So the width is... Uh, uh, 95. So let me have a, a quick look here and see if I can create something that is 90 by uh, 95 high. Uh, I'll actually be able to make that uh, higher go to my label settings and make that uh, 140. Yeah, like this. And so in this case, again, I'm able to uh, place artwork on here. However, uh, yeah, in this case, what I, uh, I will do is I will place a, a, a different kind of artwork uh, on here, which is actually going to mimic uh, the, uh, the embossing. Um, so I've created a file that is called emboss um, and so you see that this is a file that has somewhat that something that looks uh, very similar to uh, uh, the uh, uh, embossing that I had, had placed on there so what I will do in this case is I will place that uh, uh, on there and I I will let me first apply a material on um, uh, on the back. Uh, so I've got uh, plastic clear normally, uh, or plastic mold clear. There we go. Um, and so what I will do is I will make my label. Uh, First of all, transparent. There we go. And now I will go to my layers, select a layer, and I will make this material also plastic mold clear. Here we go. And I will edit this. And I I will give this a bump depth, right? And what I will do now is I will go to my other templates and I have here another that is called bump displacement. Um, now, I'm not sure if that's worked completely, but let me, yeah. Let me double check that. And so what I'm able to do here is the bump that I, the, the the artwork that I have defined, I'm actually able to create an embossing uh, on this uh, on this particular bottle uh, to uh, to to mimic uh, the actual uh, model, the way that it was done. So I have a lot of capabilities in uh, 
The shape modeler itself, uh, as you've seen, uh, I can create these spray bottles um, and uh, I can create this kind of a bottle. But then if I have some special uh, effects uh, or spe uh, special molding uh, of the bottle, very often uh, I can actually use the bump displacement uh, to create these kind of effects uh, on, uh, on that bottle. And so uh, while that is finishing, um, I will have a quick look at um, what that was supposed to look like. Uh, so let me look at uh, this one here, this one here. Is the imperial yeah, so this is the plan that we got and this is the effect that uh, uh, that we're trying uh, uh, to mimic um, so uh, all, all of the basic uh, elements of the bottle I was able to derive this from the plan uh, and here I have this shape uh, uh, that has allowed me to create uh, uh, that specific uh, uh, vignette and you see that uh, here in this case, uh, I've been able to apply that uh, on, this, uh, on this bottle uh, as well. So I would probably need to refine this uh, a little bit and make this uh, somewhat uh, higher. If I look at the plan here, uh, this is, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, it sticks out uh, more. Uh, there is about four millimeters that it has to go out but to get the idea of what is possible uh, uh, with this, I am um, creating all, all kinds of, uh, uh, of different models. Yeah? So all I have to do now is uh, uh, save this to the uh, model, and then I can uh, uh, remove uh, my, uh, my label, and I have that uh, uh, effect placed on there. Uh, done quite rapidly in this case uh, uh, for the demo, but you get the idea of what uh, uh, the capabilities are, I hope. Any other questions? Like the quad, yeah. moment. Uh, Tom, we are talking via of the phone with the customer, so so I will let you know when we can proceed, okay? Okay. E, tak, ja. dokładnie. To znaczy po prostu w tym wypadku ta możliwość nałożenia się tego, tej etykiety jest wykorzystywana do tego, żeby budować jak gdyby ciąg dalszy tego, e, tego modelu. No i, i wy, wykorzystywana później jako już gotowa butelka te, po zapisaniu tego jako modelu istniejącego. Tak, on się znajduje już w tym, od tego momentu e, w model library i jest w każdym momencie do wykorzystania. Czyli jeżeli producent tam ma tego typu butelkę, to ta, ta butelka dokładnie będzie przez Państwa wykorzystywana właściwie po czas z kolejnymi iteracjami. Tak. Tak. Dokładnie. No w szczególności, jeżeli są takie butelki, na których jest napisany jakiś tekst. No więc nie jesteśmy go w stanie, bo, bo generalna idea shape modelera polega na tym, że tniemy jak gdyby ten obiekt, tak jak on stoi na stole, to równolegle do stołu. I każdy element załamania, zmiany kształtu i tak dalej, to jest dokładnie to coś, co robimy, jak odwzorowujemy na, na, na tej osi Z, którą tutaj sobie widzimy. No i w pewnym momencie dochodzimy właśnie do takiej sytuacji, w której już przestaje to być jakimś takim kształtem, który jesteśmy w stanie nadać na zasadzie jakiej, jakiegoś tam, no, tak jak na przykład taki tekst. Nie bylibyśmy w stanie tak gęsto po, poslajsować, o on tu ma dokładnie taką butelkę, prawda? I w tym momencie tą etykietą jesteśmy w stanie zadać, tak, i że to się na przykład nazywa degdaniec. Tak. 
O, tutaj ma pan takiego sliwa typowego, zrobionego na, na puszkach, tak? Jakiegoś piwa. No w tej chwili na ekranie. Co pana interesuje dokładnie? Czy jeszcze raz przeprowadzić? To, to jest to, co tutaj widać, to, że to jest zamrożone, tak? I też, że tam powstają kropelki, jest to jeden z efektów po prostu pokrycia naszego obiektu. Tak. No, niesamowity plus tego. Plus tego software'u jest taki, że po prostu to wszystko robi się bardzo szybko. On to robi, od razu widzimy efekt, tak, wykorzystywany jest WebGL pod spodem i, i, i te, te, te biblioteki, i one powodują, że pracujemy w trybie rzeczywistym de facto z tym naszym obiektem. Ok, Tom, can... Can we go back to sleeves and uh, to the project you have made? Uh, Mr. Wojtkowski wants to see uh, what are the uh, deformation, uh, where it comes from the IC3D to, to Adobe Illustrator and how is it working in, in, in detail? Uh, I'm not sure if I fully understood what uh, the idea is, uh, but uh, you have you so... have took the the bottle of uh, plastic bottle uh, to wind yeah, clean. I'll, I'll go back to that. Um, and so, um, in this case, the bottle was an import. Yeah. So, I import that one. Yeah. Bottle. And we go back to the sleeves. So here I have my shrink sleeve template that I drag on here. And so in this case, uh, I don't know exactly uh, by heart, but I put this uh, right here. Um, I did not use the offset, but uh, I could actually uh, have used the offset uh, here uh, as well to uh, more correctly position uh, that. Um, and then it is actually a vertical. The position. Uh, could, could you could you overlap settings uh, show also the position of the uh, overlap? Yeah, of course. So I define what the overlap is. Uh, it's five millimeters, and then I define where it goes. So in this case, it will go entirely to the other side, uh, yeah. or uh, right there. So I can entirely positioned the way that I want uh, uh, that uh, to be. Now, in this case, the most logical thing would be to place it here. Uh, yeah, so that's where I will be putting it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then what I have to do is start, start the simulation. Tak, dokładnie. I go obkurczamy i to jest jakiś czas i ten czas jest później bezpośrednio przekładany na to, co się dzieje z tą, z tą folią. Dokładnie. I, i to jest ten, ten cały proces. Tak? I czekamy, jak gdyby tutaj możemy ileś tam iteracji zrobić tego całego obkurczania, bo tak naprawdę dążymy do tego, żeby odtworzyć rzeczywistość. Tak? I on po tym odtworzeniu, jak gdyby w pewnym momencie już wie, to jest to. Tak. Well, proceed, you know. Za chwilkę ten, tą pokażę, co się dzieje wtedy, jak to, jak to się przenosi właśnie. Ok, so can we stop? Tak, teraz przeprowadzę dokładnie te wszystkie obliczenia na bazie czasu, który upłynął i co się z tym stało. No i ta, ta, teraz to pole nam się tu pojawia. A, jesteśmy już teraz w ilustratorze. And we place our artwork. Tak, dokładnie. 
Uh, no, that's not where it is. And I did not check the dimensions of my artwork, uh, of course, so there might be a, a, a small difference uh, here. The reason why my artwork is, uh, is smaller is because I, I didn't check the correct uh, layout. Ona to jest to skonstruowane w ten sposób, że tam jest, jest warstwa, która się nazywa artwork, i jest warstwa, która nazywa się CAD. Ta warstwa CAD jest wykorzystywana do tego, żeby, żeby przenosić informacje właśnie na temat tego, co on ma wyświetlać de facto, czyli jak tam między innymi robiliśmy etykiety i obcinaliśmy jej rogi do okrągłych, czy zaokrąglaliśmy rogi, to w tym momencie na tym kacie się to odbywa, a artwork to jest ta warstwa, do, na którą jak gdyby wrzuca się całą naszą zawartość i ona będzie podlegała temu całemu szwinkowaniu. Dokładnie. Aha. Dokładnie. Tom, can, can you inter, integrate now the, in, into the artwork to, to show uh, how it works, uh, the, the corresponding with, between Illustrator and the... Is here... Oh, what the, to jest to, co się pojawia tutaj, course? to jest to deformacja. Tak? Uh, could, you, could you show it once again, the, the, the deformation, which is... The, the, the other sort, yeah. I'll, I'll show it on, on this one uh, here now. Uh, so uh, let me actually have uh, and place it slightly differently. I'll actually move it around, update, so that it's more correctly positioned. So you see that it, it is now uh, bent here a, a little bit, so I'll select uh, up. I will select, if it allows me to select, oh, come on. Uh, why isn't it allowing me to select this? Okay, let me lock the option. What happened between earlier and now? Why am I not able to? I don't know what is happening <laughs> with this file, because earlier I was able to select it. Um, let me have a quick look at the outline. Here. Ah, I'm sorry. So, beginner's mistake. Um, so, I go to the envelope distort, make with mesh. I uh, see what I want to do here. So, I'll make that uh, even less uh, four. And uh, the uh, no, it's the other way around, so we'll make that 4, and we'll make this uh, 20, or even 25, there we go. And so this is the second part of the plugin that pops up uh, yeah, then, and when I go apply now, it will distort it there. And... And it's yeah, rectified it here now. Yeah. Jaki jest jej efekt? Dokładnie na, na tej zasadzie.
to zaraz zapytam, bo tej opcji to nie, nie widziałem nigdy. Tom, is it possible to, to um, get the information what to, uh, from within this uh, IC3D uh, model to, to what the transformation should should be and to make some changes here to which which will uh, go to the illustrator. No, Because so what you, what you can do is you see here the transformation. You could potentially edit this uh, if you wanted to, uh, to uh, but you're not really getting uh, any statistics or any uh, detailed information on what the transformation is. No. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you see here the grid and you see what is the transformation that has been applied, but you don't get any further details. Mm -hmm. Not a... Dokładnie na tej zasadzie. Mm -hmm. Tam po prostu te obiekty nie, nie mają postaci e, nie mają postaci siatki wektorowej, tylko to jest po prostu bitmapa. I w związku z tym tam nie ma, on nie widzi tego obiektu, jak, że to jest akurat obiekt tekstowy, a ten jest jakimś tam obiektem stricte wektorowym na zasadzie czy do kwadratu, czy prostokąta, czy kreski. E, I w związku z tym e, nie jest w stanie jak gdyby nanieść tej deformacji z powrotem tutaj. No w sumie jest to zrozumiałe, dlatego że WebGL jest oparty o bitmapy. Mm -hmm. okay. Jeśli chodzi o IC3D, yy, ma pan jeszcze jakieś pytania? Czy przechodzimy? Mm -hmm. Tak. Mhm. No, ono jest ogromne. Ono przede wszystkim jeszcze pozwala na to, żeby pokazać klientowi, jak, jak jego produkt de facto będzie wyglądał w określonym miejscu. Dokładnie. I to jest bardzo, bardzo fajna sprawa i, i to jest coś, co w ESCO jest oddzielnym produktem w ogóle, który wymaga strasznie skomplikowanych operacji i tak nie dość, że kosztuje straszne pieniądze, to jeszcze do tego sam proces przygotowania tego jest strasznie skomplikowany. Tutaj de facto to, co jest bardzo fajne, on jest w stanie zaczytać zdjęcie 3D. W związku z tym, jeżeli pana klientem byłaby, nie wiem, jakaś tam e, sieć, nie wiem, Auchan na przykład, to jest pan w stanie pojechać do takiego marketu, stanąć w miejscu, gdzie ten... E, ekspozytor ma stać, albo ta, gdzie ten produkt ma stać, zrobić zdjęcia do, do okulne, takie 360 stopni e, i wczytać do programu IC3D i ten produkt dokładnie na tej konkretnej półce, na, w tym konkretnym miejscu zaprezentować. To, co jest najważniejsze w tym momencie, wszystkie światła, które występują w danym miejscu, po prostu będą odgrywały rolę, dlatego że w ramach takiego z tego tego robienia zdjęcia 360 stopni jest dokładnie analizowane światło, które wchodzi z, przez okna, które jest gdzieś tam sztucznym światłem i, albo jakimiś spotowymi. I te wszystkie elementy, jak gdyby on oświetlenie bierze dokładnie z tego, jakie ma zdjęcie. W związku z tym ten pana produkt, który chce pan zaprezentować klientowi, może się w tym momencie pojawić i możemy pokazać, o w tym miejscu to on będzie bardzo pięknie, jasnym obiektem, ale w tym miejscu to będzie kompletnie już zaciemnionym i w ogóle nie będzie tego efektu. W związku z tym no, jest to bardzo dobre narzędzie. Oczywiście wszystko jest kwestia tego, za co klient chce zapłacić i, i, i ile energii państwo musicie poświęcić do tego, żeby to zrobić. Za to tutaj te możliwości są jak gdyby pełne. To, co jeszcze pokazuje, tutaj to, to mnie pokazał, to jeszcze paletowanie. Czyli ten produkt możemy powkładać na palety 
I dokładnie. I jak on będzie się chociażby prezentował, tak i ja tam widziałem kiedyś prezentację, gdzie po prostu w magazynie pokazują, jak ten produkt się prezentuje i w ilu paczkach on tam jest poukładany. Paczki są pogru- jak gdyby produkty są pogrupowane w paczki, paczki po- popaletowane. I te wszystkie elementy jak gdyby można sobie zwizualizować. Ja mam wrażenie, że w dzisiejszych czasach każde, każde, każda rzecz, którą możemy wprowadzić do oferty, generalnie nas odróżnia od całej konkurencji i to powoduje, że klienci nas mogą kochać, czy mają za co kochać tak naprawdę. Tutaj te produkty, tak jak widać w tej chwili na ekranie, te, które są takie gdzieś tam przez nich przygotowane, pokazane, co można zrobić. Myśmy też robili tak z rzeczy dla jednego z klientów produkującego szynkę i oni mieli opakowania takie plastikowe, mniej więcej to, co tam Tom w pewnym momencie to, to opakowanie na masło produkował, tylko że znacznie węższe, zrobione z czarnego plastiku, na to były kładzione plasterki szynki, te plasterki szynki wkładli, było zrobione zdjęcie tego plasterka szynki, jak gdyby wrzucone i, i, i powycinane tam, gdzie nie ma i to wszystko pokryte właśnie takim sliwem, który, który się przyklejał na zewnątrz i to, co się tam odrywa, prawda, na górze, z takiej szynki, no to po prostu można było przepięknie zaprezentować. Co więcej, ta, ta pokrywka jak gdyby częściowo była przezroczysta, a częściowo niosła ze sobą rysunek. W związku z tym idealnie było widać sam produkt, to, to zdjęcie tej szynki pod spodem bardzo realistycznie to wyglądało po tym, jak to przygotowaliśmy. 